everybody, me and Dusty are here today to start a weekend reading vlog. Today is Friday, February 14th, and today I have the day off work because I took it off of work. <laughs> Actually, I'm supposed to be at work today, but um, they have a professional development day today at school, and um, none of the things they're talking about today are relevant to a music class. They're talking about like writing in the classroom and how to write essays and how to like teach your kids how to write and I teach band we don't we don't write essays in band so I am not going I use a sick day today even though I'm not sick at all <laughs> so we're just gonna start our weekend a little bit early and have a bit of a personal day a personal mental health day um, in this reading vlog I am planning on starting Elantris by Brandon Sanderson this is the first book that Brandon Sanderson wrote in the Cosmere books and so I'm really excited to jump into this world. I've been kind of procrastinating them. I don't know why. Uh, they intimidate me for some reason but I am ready to jump in. Last night I finished Anne of Avonlea and it was amazing and it left me in a bit of a book hangover so I'm hoping this can just pull me out of my book hangover. Um, Today, first before I, I do any reading today, I'm going to go quickly to the store to get a quick Valentine's Day candy for my husband and a card. Um, I actually, I got him fuzzy slippers for a Valentine's Day and I want to add something to it and uh, get a card. So I'm going to run out, do that, and then come back, maybe uh, eat some lunch while I dive into Elantris. I'm so excited. We're back from the store. Quick update. I got this adorable card for my husband. Obviously, for my husband. Ha! And, <laughs> okay, in a real scenario, he would probably be practicing guitar and I would be reading, but we're gonna go with it because it was just so adorable. But yeah, my husband's not, not really much of a reader, but we're gonna pretend like he is for the sake of giving him this card. Um, I also got some lunch at the grocery store. My grocery store has like freshly made sushi, which is pretty decent. And I also got my husband these. Fun fact, I'm allergic to peanuts, so I can't eat these, but my husband loves them. So um, that'll be a little addition to his Valentine's Day present along with the fuzzy slippers. And I decided I'm going to eat this. Oh, and I also got Starbucks because I'm basic and I have no self-control. So we're going to consume this. And we're going to watch Anne with an E, just one episode, because I do want to get to reading. I did not lie to you. I will read in this reading vlog, but I'm also watching Anne, of, Anne with an E, and I love it. It's lots of great storytelling. Um, it takes Anne of Green Gables, and it does something kind of different with it. So just know going into it, um, if you decide to watch it, it's not going to be exactly like Anne of Green Gables. Um, they do use some of the storylines, but um, not honestly a whole lot. But they do use the characters and the characterization of Anne. They do really well. And um, Marilla and Matthew Cuthbert and everyone in the show is pretty true to the book. I just think that this show is really interesting. It's really well done. So I'm on season two. So we're gonna eat some lunch, watch some TV, and then read some Malandris. Hi there. It's a bit later, and I reached page 82 of Elantris, and really liking it. Um, a little bit slightly overwhelmed by all of the names and characters and politics already, which is normal when you start a new fantasy series that is complex. And so... I'm a little bit, my head is a little bit spinning with all the information, but it's it's not necessarily unclear what's happening, um, but I am trying to kind of wrap my head around the politics of the world. That part has been a little bit, um, maybe too much information at once, but maybe that will become um, more clear later. I'm sure it will. So if you don't know the plot and story of this book, um, we follow a world in which there is this city of Elantris and the city has fallen 
there was some sort of mysterious event, supernatural event. Um, I'm not quite clear on what that event was. Um, they talked about a, an earthquake of some kind. So after this big monumental event, the people of Elantris were cursed. And so they used to be these godlike figures and everybody wanted to be them and they had a lot of power and then suddenly they are all cursed and their bodies basically decay like like they're dead um, they, they are still alive but their bodies don't heal anymore so in the beginning we meet Prince Raiden and he wakes up one day afflicted with this disease that afflicts the people of Elantris and so I guess anyone can just get this disease and wake up with it one morning and so what they do is they shut the people into the city of Atlantis um, they guard the walls of the city so that they can't get out they don't know how the disease spreads or why anyone gets it but they do and so they've been just shoving all the people all the sick dying dead people into Elantris. Prince is afflicted with it and we learn about Elantris through his eyes. We also learn about the outside world of the surrounding city of K through the woman who was supposed to marry Prince Raiden and she arrives in the city of K just to learn that the prince has mysteriously vanished or died. They're, they're telling everyone that he died, but really he's in Atlantis now. So Sanderson is using her to show you the outside world of Atlantis and then using Prince Raiden to show you what the inside of Atlantis looks like. And wow, Atlantis is not a place that you would ever want to go to or find yourself in. It's full of brutality and it has its own like gang system. There's slime and dirt everywhere, and there's just dying people everywhere, and it's not a fun place to be. Brandon Sanderson's ability to build a world so quickly, I've only read 80 pages, and I just have a lot of information already, and I have a good picture of the world, is really admirable and really impressive that he can paint that picture in only 80 pages, and I already have like a good feel for the world and um, it's, it's already just a very vivid world. I'm going to take a little break from reading for now. My husband should be home fairly, fairly soon from his day student teaching and uh, got everyone's cuddling, of course, as they always are. But I think I'm going to interrupt their cuddle fest and go practice. Probably need to practice. I've been learning violin, so I need to practice violin. And usually on the days that I practice violin, I try to also practice piano. So we'll see if I can squeeze both in, or maybe just maybe just violin today, um, depending on what we're gonna do tonight. But for Valentine's Day, my husband and I are just gonna be cooking a dinner at home. We're making steak and asparagus, and then for dessert, we're making cherry turnovers with ice cream on top well we bought the cherry turnovers would have been cool to actually make them from scratch but we were not um planning that ahead of time so should be delicious and uh i'm excited to give him his gift and then i think he got me a little gift too so should be a lovely valentine's day evening we do not want to go out on valentine's day because I hate people and crowds and also we have no money right now because my husband is in school full time and I'm the only one who's working in our household so we have no money to do anything anyways but even if we did have money I think a night at home is a much more fun Valentine's Day <laughs> than um, going out and fighting all the crowds and restaurants and whatnots. so I'll update you a little later. So you can see what we're up to. Julio's home and he made steak. He made a delicious steak dinner. We're gonna have wine. <laughs> we're so 
excited. This is apparently our new Valentine's Day tradition, isn't it? Yeah. This is the second annu- annual steak Every dinner. Every year, <laughs> I get better at it. This is the second annual steak dinner. Julio thinks these are more delicious than last year. We're going to put it to the test. And what are we going to watch? I don't gonna watch know something. Yet. Something nice. Either Better, better Call Saul with, a lot, you know, standard, lots Valentine's of violins. Stuff. Valentine's yeah. Day show with mobsters and gangsters. Mm-hmm. Or a Pixar movie. <laughs> Which one do you think? We'll find out. <laughs> we'll have to decide. But so excited to eat this steak. Good morning. It is Saturday, February 15th. And we have just been having a positively lazy morning. Um, we ate some breakfast and watched an episode of Better Call Saul, which shout out to my Breaking Bad fans out there. But um, they finally released season four of Better Call Saul on Netflix, so we've been watching that any second we can get. Um, Julio has to do homework for probably most of the rest of the day, so I'm going to be, again, reading, hopefully most of the day, and um, practicing flute, probably. I got to practice violin yesterday, but, um, oh, and piano, actually, yeah, I I practice piano too, so today is a flute day. I'm trying to practice three different instruments at once. So I try to do violin and piano on one day and then the next day it will be a flute day. So today is flute day and um, maybe I'll insert a little bit of what I'm working on so you can hear. But um, other than that, trying to get a good chunk of Elantris done. I read a little bit before bed too last night and I got to page 89. So it's a big book. I think it's like a 600 page book, but um, almost 100 pages in, so not too bad of a start, but hopefully can get like at least another 100 pages, maybe more, maybe like 150 pages. So um, that's the plan. So I'm going to shower and practice my Duolingo for the day. I'm trying to learn Spanish right now and then get cracking into Elantris. I'll update you on how that goes. Hello. Quick reading update for you. It's a little bit later. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon and I sat down and I read a significant little chunk of Elantris. I got about 60 more pages down. Um, The world is definitely coming into its own. Um, I'm learning a lot about the politics. It's very politically driven of a story, which um, I didn't fully know going in, but that's totally fine with me. I think it's very interesting and intriguing, and the way that the politics are explained is um, very clear and straightforward, but it is is a lot of information, but um, it's it's definitely not confusing at all. This is a world in which we have um, some multiple religions kind of competing for attention, and particularly one with a religious figure who's coming in and basically this religious man's goal is to convert all of the city of the capital of of Keg. It's called Erlon, I think. Yeah, (laughs) Erlon. And his goal is to um, convert everyone and to uh, basically burn down Atlantris because Atlantris is supposedly a source of evil and he's kind of using Atlantris to convert the people in Erlon, um, but if Erlon does not convert, um, he's going to kill everyone in the city. It's basically convert or die, and so we see that going on. We also have a struggle between a very inept king of Erlon, uh, and he, he just is a bit corrupt, and the nobles are sort of meeting and conniving against the king, but also the nobles are also being kind of coerced by this religious figure, so you kind of don't know at this point um, which way things are going to go, which noblemen will go with which side, so we're really building all of those things right now on the political spectrum, and then meanwhile you have um, our character, our prince who is trapped in Elantris, and he's sort of 
starting to um, come into his own and figure out how to survive in his own unique way in Elantris and he's building alliances um, he's make, making friends and so you see that going on at the same time so really interesting world building um, getting to know the characters better the characterization is fantastic which after reading Skyward and Starsight I kind of expected that that seems to be a trademark of Brandon Sanderson and is that he's really good at getting you to believe in his characters and root for his characters also there's a female lead character in this book who is just really well written and she's feisty and she's interesting and she knows what she wants and she's not afraid to get it and she's kind of fighting all these like stereotypes they have against women so that's a fun aspect of this as well just really well written characters and just a lot of layers to the story this book is slow going for me it took me many hours to get 60 pages in like two or three hours just to read 60 pages um, there's just a lot of information and I find that I can't read high fantasy quickly at all it's, it's just not a fast read so that's fine I'm totally okay with taking my time I just want I want to be able to understand every bit of it and uh, not rush through it I'm gonna give my brain a little break from reading and uh, pick up my flute and practice a bit I have some things I'm working on so um, I'll update you a little bit later in the day able to pull away Julio from his never-ending piles of homework. Oh my goodness, that sun. <laughs> the sun is on and off killing us, but <laughs> we'll see how this goes. We are finally going to go get some dinner at the most fabulous burger place in town. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of burger are you going to get? There you go. <laughs> We're back from dinner and we're gonna watch Better Call Saul because we're obsessed yes, with it. Yes, you are. <clears throat> and uh, then Julio's gonna do some more homework. The dogs are very happy to have us back. Evelyn, stop! Stop licking. <laughs> Living their best dog life. Hello! So we went to dinner, came back, watched two episodes of Better Call Saul because it is so good and we are obsessed. I think we have two episodes left in that show. Um, Julio is now going to be doing more homework and my goal is to get to page 200 of Elantris. Can I do it? We will see. I'm not good at reading at night. I usually fall asleep. Um, pretty quickly, but I feel like I have enough energy right now that I think I could get maybe at least 20 pages But to get to 200 I need to read like 40 more pages, so we'll see. I have Rosie here though to uh, cheer me on Hi Rosie. Hi everybody. We are actually going to a rehearsal this morning. It is Sunday February 16th and I have a random rehearsal this morning, which I usually don't have, but I will be in a rehearsal for this flute group that I'm in from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. So that takes up pretty much my whole morning. I won't be getting any reading done. And I was thinking last night, I did get to page 200 in Elantris last night before falling asleep on the couch, as predicted. I'm averaging about 100 pages a day, 
with Elantris, which means I wouldn't actually be able to finish Elantris if I'm keeping this to be a weekend reading vlog. So maybe we're gonna change to a week-long reading vlogs just so that I can finish Elantris and you can hear my thoughts at the end. We'll go with that and try it and see how it goes. Um, it might be a little bit of a longer vlog than I anticipated. However, it totally works out still because I do actually have the week off from work. So I can afford to spend some time every day to read 100 pages. So that means I think I would finish Elantris around Thursday because it's like 600 pages or so. Um, so we may extend this vlog just a little bit. I feel like Elantris is a little bit slow going at this point as well in the story. So I found myself last night having to kind of push through a little bit. There's just a lot of dialogue and not a lot of action. So sometimes it makes it a little bit difficult to keep my focus because they're they're talking a lot about the politics of the world and explaining a lot. I don't know if that's kind of an early debut of Brandon Sanderson problem, but I feel like with Skyward and Starsight, um, he was much better at giving you information, but also giving you a lot of action. And with Elantris, I feel like it's been mostly information, which, you know, it's just a, a different kind of reading experience. Also, I didn't expect Elantris to have humor, and it totally does, um, especially between uh, Galadin and Raiden in Elantris as they're um, trying to build a life in this slum of a city. Um, there's just a lot of funny dialogue between them, and I don't know why I didn't expect that, but it makes sense based on the humor that I've seen in Skyward. Um, it's, it's really very similar, so I'm enjoying that aspect as well. Um, I just I did not expect that. This afternoon, Julio has rehearsal pretty much when I get back from my rehearsal. So we're not going to see each oh, other and, ooh, <laughs> and we're not going to hang out much today. So that gives me pretty much the whole afternoon to read 100 pages. So that's my plan. Um, go to rehearsal, come home, probably pick up some lunch, eat lunch and make more headway in Elantris. So yeah, I will update you a little bit later when that happens. Hi everyone, back from rehearsal and <laughs> I'm feeling a little bummed because <laughs> I, I lost something somewhere between rehearsal and my car. I lost something that I literally just bought. Um, it's like music stand extenders for my music to go on. And so I literally just bought them for 20 bucks and now they disappeared. And so hopefully they turn up. But you know when you're just mad at yourself because you did something stupid? That's me right now. But I have my ramen here sitting down for some lunch. Um, I don't I don't particularly feel like reading right now. I think I'm going to watch some booktube videos and just like catch up on booktube happenings. And maybe I'll be in the mood to read. Or maybe not, I don't know, but I do really want to continue making some headway with Elantris, but what do you do when you don't feel like reading? Let me know down below. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I will do if I do not want to read today, because that was kind of my whole plan. It's also a beautiful day outside, and I just kind of want to be outside. Maybe I will take my book somewhere outside to a park, maybe? I don't know where, though. Also, I'd rather read in my house and not, like, come across random strangers while I'm reading. I don't know. I'm in a weird mood right now, but we're going to try to cheer up. <laughs> I don't know why I feel kind of blah, but we're going to watch some booktube videos, and maybe that will inspire us to read. Brian does for all of his characters. They just feel so authentic and grounded in reality. Well, the good news is, an hour later, and I've subscribed to a bunch of new booktubers, but I haven't read anything. What's wrong with me? I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go put our phone in a different room 
So it's far, 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 far away from us. And we're going to pick up our freaking book. And we're going to read. And if I still don't feel like reading, then I will put it down. But I need to just pick up the book. Just pick it up already. What's wrong with me today? I don't know. It's, it's just, it's a weird, weird day. I solemnly swear not to film anymore until I actually read something. Also, I straight up forgot that I have another rehearsal today at 6 p.m. So now I actually have a, a timeline or a time limit on how much I can get read this afternoon. So we have about two and a half, three hours to get some reading done. So now I am getting off my phone and picking up my book. update for you. I was feeling so restless and it was such a beautiful day outside as uh, you saw in the little clips that I just showed you that I, I had to go take a walk and then I found the audiobook version of Lantris on script and so that helped me be productive and helped me a little bit get out of my reading slump <laughs> and also got me outside and exercising so I went for a, a long walk by myself and then um, I came back home and took my dogs for a walk too, and they really enjoy that. Um, I should take them for walks more often. This just the only thing is like they walk really fast for like two seconds, and then they just like start walking really slowly because they're one small dogs, and two they're really kind of old dogs. <laughs> they're both kind of senior citizens, so uh, they don't walk really long or far, but uh, they're enjoying some dinner now. We're back home, and I got a couple of chapters into, uh, or further into Elantris, and um, I have to say, I'm finding this dynamic between, there's a character named Harathan, who's sort of this religious figure. He's there in the city of Erlon to convert everyone to his particular religion. And then he kind of joins up with this zealot, religious zealot. And um, it's been an interesting dynamic to watch the two of them try to go out onto town because they both have really different styles of trying to convert people. And so um, the zealot kind of will like go off on a crazy tangent and um, people will really listen to him, but um, the religious priest man figure knows that it's not going to stick because he has um, only passion and Harathan has this political agenda too um, and war agenda and has this whole other background and experience. And so it's really interesting to watch the dynamic between them and Harathan kind of explaining or trying to explain to Diloff, I think is his name, the zealot. He's trying to explain to the zealot why his, the zealot's methods aren't going to stick. Like they may um, create a lot of passion, but they're not going to really take with the society because you have to um, have a really strategic way of doing it. Otherwise, there will be disaster, which Harathan has also experienced. And so I find that dynamic of the world really interesting. We learned a little bit more too um, about Serene and her background. And I really enjoy the, the feminist kind of thread that's going on with Serene. Um, she is very much seen as an, an old maid in her society. She is a, a lot more progressive in her um, society and then in Erlon they're a lot more um, conservative and they're like shocked she's wearing pants to do fencing and things like that. So right now in the world we're just learning a lot more about the characters and their background. Um, the political intrigue is building, just kind of learning about the world. There's some new layers to the religious aspect of it and also to the political aspect of it between the kingdoms that we learned in the couple chapters that I listened to and yeah that's that's about it for now my husband is bringing home some delicious burritos for us so we're gonna eat some burritos and then I have another rehearsal I'm going to 
um, around 6 p.m. So if I if I get much more done, I will I will update you on the reading front, but possibly not a lot more reading for the rest of the evening. But burritos are definitely on the agenda. So excited for that. Okay, so funny story. Remember earlier I was upset because I could not find my music stand extenders. Apparently I put them on top of my car and drove away. And uh, somebody else from the group found them and picked them up. So they are not lost forever. So um, I was on Mopey all day for no reason. And <laughs> all is well. But... I am back home after rehearsal. So many rehearsals today. Um, Julio is doing good with his homework. So we're going to finish Better Call Saul because we have like two episodes left. And the season has been really slow so far. And I know in this last couple episodes it's going to just like pick up and get crazy. What do you think of the season so far? It's good. It's good. I mean, it's been really slow. Yeah, that's what I was saying. This episode is gonna pick up. Cause some stuff is gonna happen. Stuff's gonna happen. Good morning. It is President's Day here in the United States, so it is a holiday. Um, my husband has a day off. Um, we've just had a really lazy but also productive morning. He's been doing homework all morning, and I've been reading all morning, and I have made quite a lot of progress. Um, I think I've read, I've read about, oh my goodness, I think I read about 60, 70 pages this morning, which is good because yesterday I didn't read very much so today we're kind of making up for it but um, it's starting to get really good I had a little bit of a hard time getting into it and part of that is because I'm not super interested in the political side so we actually have three different perspectives we have a perspective from the princess Sereni and then we have a perspective from Rowden who's trapped inside Elandris and he is cursed and then we have a perspective of this religious figure who's trying to convert everyone in the in the land basically to his religion or else he's going to kill everyone and the princess's perspective usually has a lot to do with the political landscape of the world and I always find myself just a tad bit bored um, it's just not something that holds my interest as strong as the two other perspectives so um, for a little while it was a little bit just slow going for me but the storylines are starting to kind of converge and uh, we're starting to see things come together and it's starting to get really interesting so I'm liking it more now I've just about hit the 340 page mark so, um, more than halfway through this book, which is a fantastic feeling. Um, it's quite a large book, and th these pages are quite large, too, and the font is quite small. So, it's definitely taken me a little longer than I thought, but I think if I read 100 pages a day, I'll be able to finish it in a couple of days from today. So, uh, I think I will keep vlogging so that you can find out my final thoughts and yeah other than that um, we're gonna go to lunch after um, after Julio gets out of the shower and then come back so he can do more homework and I probably will practice instead of read because I have a violin lesson later tonight and I want to be semi prepared <laughs> I'm terrible at violin right now, so I'm never fully prepared for a lesson, but um, we're going to try our best. And then hopefully get at least to the 400 page mark by the end of today. You? Uh, mm -hmm. 
magnificent. Good morning. It is Tuesday morning and I have the week off from work because my school district does spring break um, a little differently than some other school districts in the area. We do one week off in February and one week off in March. So this is my week off in February and so far I've been reading Elantris this morning. I, I still got up really early because my husband went off to do his um, student teaching and go to class and everything he does. So I got up with him <laughs> and I've been reading and I got caught up to page 400 because I did not get caught up to page 400 yesterday and that was my plan. Um, I would like to hopefully get to page 500 today and then the, maybe the next day be able to finish it or maybe even today I do have the whole day off but at the pace I'm going I don't know if I can read a hundred and sixty hundred seventy pages um, I also I don't know what I want to do today I have maybe some things that I want to do out and about in the world I want to get new shoes for work because my shoes are falling apart <laughs> And uh, maybe some new pants too, because my, my pants have also been falling apart. I just, I just need some new clothes for the lower half of my body. <laughs> but I also want to read, and I also want to do that, and I don't know what to do. I think what I'll do is I'll spend another um, hour or so reading. I'll see if maybe I can get to page 450. I think that would be a good goal. And then after I get to page 450, I'll eat some lunch and maybe go out on the town a little bit. I did something naughty last night. I put in an order for Book Outlet. <laughs> but I had a little bit of a justification because I wanted to get some books for middle grade March because I don't have any books that fit the prompt. And I also wanted to buy the group book, which is the Book of Boy. And they had it on Book Outlet for pretty cheap. And so I really wanted to do that. And then, of course, I wanted to get the free shipping. So I had to get at least $35 worth of books. So I have eight books coming in the mail. So without further ado, how is it going with Elantris? Um, 400 pages in, and I have a feeling that action is going to start happening for the rest of the book. We had some twists and turns and um, had some unexpected things happen and some developments with the characters. Some shocking things happened and I'm, I'm really excited about how it's gonna wrap up. I was perusing Goodreads this morning just to kind of see like what the general consensus was about Elantris and I see that most people are like it's good but it's not as good as his later works and I, I think I can definitely see that for me right now if I were to guess what I'm gonna rate this when I finish it I think it would be a four star book if I was gonna choose a rating right now. Because to me, it has some slow parts. It has some dry spells. Um, there's a lot of talking. There's a lot of politics and religion and uh, building of the world in the first half of the book. And I found myself uh, struggling a little bit to uh, wanna push through it. I should clarify, I never really wanted to put it down completely, but there definitely were some more uninteresting sections that we were we were just learning and that's fine but i think the way it, it's delivered is maybe not as strong in his debut novel maybe than some of his later works um just going off of how i've read skyward and starsight but then again skyward and starsight are also young adult books so they do kind of by nature move a little faster along but if i was gonna guess right now i think this is gonna be a four star read for me because of that reason but it's still this is a book that i i would definitely reread again um just a really fascinating story i love i love the mashup of like zombies and fantasy which this book is and to me that's just like so much fun 
and the political intrigue is is also creating a really um, multi-layered story as much as I didn't always enjoy it reading those sections. Okay, I stand corrected. I'm on page 456, and as I suspected, things are happening, and it's getting really, really good. Ooh, it's getting so interesting, and it might be a five-star book after all. I should know better than to doubt Brandon Sanderson's amazingness, but man, he just, he has a way of tying plot lines together in a way that you don't necessarily know how to predict, but also is so satisfying and makes complete sense to where you're like, oh, of course, of course that's happening now. Of course this character is doing this. Of course these are the consequences, you know, but if you had asked me where the story was going, I wouldn't have been able to guess, but just, I think this is gonna be a five star read, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, it's getting really, really good. I'm gonna step out of the house because I um, don't wanna go too stir crazy and uh, wanna walk around, you know, see human beings. So I'm gonna hit the town, go look for some shoes for work, slash the gym, and maybe get some pants also for work, and uh, hopefully come back and do some more reading. I think I can, I think I can maybe finish it. I don't wanna say that yet, because I don't wanna um, jinx myself necessarily, but I feel like I could finish this book today. We're back from shopping, and we made out really well. We got some pants for work, for when we need to you know, look professional. So we got some, some work slacks. We got some shoes. This was the thing that I super, super needed. The Skechers were buy one, get one half off. So obviously I had to get two pairs. Super comfy, good for the gym. Also sometimes good for work when I don't have to look super fancy. And then these are like fancy work shoes. They're Clark's and they're comfy and I can stand in on them all day because that's what I do. And then you know, just shoes when you when you need to look cute for no reason. So we made out really well with oh and also I got this pair of mom, mom jeans, I'm calling. <laughs> They're mom jeans. They're even the mom jeans color. But um that's fine. I I needed just like another pair of jeans. So there they are. It's really hard to find pants for short people. So I had actually I wanted a darker color of jean, but that's okay, we're gonna embrace our inner soccer mom. <laughs> you might have noticed that I didn't buy any books, so can we just applaud me for a second? Give myself a pat on the back for not going to the used bookstore. I did, however, get this delicious strawberry ice blended with uh, lychee jelly in the bottom, and it's amazing, and it's giving me the significant amount of sugar rush that I need. To finish Elantris. I think I can finish this today. We're gonna see. I'm gonna sit down. I've had some time to clear my mind from reading. I'm gonna sit down and try to power through this baby. I've got like 100 pages left, so I think we can do this like in the next few hours or so. Wish me luck. Good morning. It is Tuesday morning, and I actually finished Elantris last night but um, I finished it right when my husband was getting home and then I got busy talking to him and I did not film anymore. But I've had a night to sleep on my thoughts. <laughs> and honestly, this book was amazing. What I think I, I appreciate the most about this book is that it's not necessarily revolving around the fantasy world itself. It's like when I think of high fantasy, I think of books that have the world as really the centerpiece and then sometimes the characters feel like just a necessary part of the world but it doesn't necessarily go into like the psyche of the characters and what's going on with them whereas this book is more of the characters are the center and the world is like the outlying factor. The world is still really good and really interesting, but it's much more about the characters and their growth and their development and how they learn. And so it's 
much more like you could take this story and put it in a different genre and still and make it work it's just the setting is fantasy if that makes sense so it felt unique to me because the fantasy element is more understated than the character development and I personally like that. I think I can get behind any genre and any story if I care about the characters. And that really happened with this book. So I gave this book five stars. I thought the plot just wraps up in a really interesting, unique, unexpected way, but also a really satisfying way. And you you really you really get what what you came for when you go into this book. You know, you get the action at the end, you get the fantasy, you get the fighting, um, you get the world building, but you also get this really beautiful story about characters who learn and grow and kind of come into their own. So I've just had a great time reading Elantris. I devoured it. I, I, I started it, I don't know, four days ago and I finished it within four or five days. So. That's really fast reading for me. I also was like trying really hard to read it and also I had the day off work. <laughs> so, you know, I read it faster for that reason too. But also I couldn't put it down. There were a few times I was tempted to put it down um, towards the beginning, just was a little slower. And I would say after page 400, things pick up. So you really have to stick with this one and like commit <laughs> and push yourself through a little bit more of like the political conversations um, if that doesn't interest you as much, which it didn't interest me in the beginning, but at the end I saw how everything wrapped up and everything just added so much to the story. So loved it. Five stars. Thank you so much for joining this reading vlog adventure. I had a glorious time reading Elantris. Um, I can't wait to read more Cosmere books. This was my first Cosmere book I've ever read and it was fantastic. So um, I have high hopes for the future. Be sure to follow me on Goodreads and I also have a bookstagram account that are linked down below. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, please do so so that you can keep up with my reading adventures. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.